Let's now look at the import XML function, which combined with expat queries will allow us to import structured data from a web page. What do I mean by structured data? Well, we have an example here. The City of Ottawa's page dedicated to Mayor Jim Watson and the city councillors. And if we look at the code, I will inspect here. So right click, inspector again. I see that, you know, for example, um, mayor, councillor, councillor and deputy mayor, and so on, are nested inside. Uh, or not, not really, they are not really nested, but uh, rather they are H4 level headings. Their names are H3 headings and so on. Uh, we see here phone numbers and uh, fax numbers, which are in a list. And then we have um, the ward. That's um, a little problem. The previous version of this page actually had a specific class for um, the ward names. Right now, the wards appear to be kind of floating. Uh, we see it here. They're not inside a div per se. I mean, they are in a much wider div, but they don't have their own div. So it's kind of floating out there. So we'll see what we can do with that. And then we have email addresses. So let's say that hypothetically, we wanted to create our own database with, you know, the name of each elected official, their title, ward, email, phone number, and so on. So let's start with the names. So remember I said H3. So we'll copy the URL here and I will put equal sign to call up the function XML this time, put the URL comma, and then quotation marks, forward slash, forward slash, h3. And then we will close our function. Awesome. Now I have Jim Watson, Matthew Luloff, and so on. I have 24 elected officials. There are 23 counselors and a mayor, one mayor. Perfect. Now I would like their respective title. Inspect. If I recall correctly, I said that they were H4 headings. Perfect. So let's try this with H4. Since we're pretty much reusing the same function, I'll just copy this one, paste it here, but I will put H4 instead. All right, now I have the elected official, um, their title, and then I would like to get for each elected official, say their phone number and email address. Um, I could add a row. So I will put name, position, just so that I can organize my data a little bit better. Okay, now let's try phone numbers and fax numbers. The previous version of this web page was a little bit better organized because there were um, actual uh, lists that were um, divided between the telephone numbers and the fax numbers. And a fellow YouTuber, Patrick Dutch, uh, shout out uh, to him, uh, did teach me in the comments how to import the telephone numbers and fax numbers separately by adding um, a square bracket, then an index number, and then a square bracket again to select a specific item in a list. Unfortunately, that no longer works. So we'll try to do it um, another way. So we have here what appears to be, oops, it disappeared. If you look at the bottom um, in my uh, code explorer, you see that we have a div called item list. So I will try to do it. There we go. If we click, okay, we see it here, item list, which this div encompasses the telephone number and the fax number for each elected official. So I will um, look at it. Yeah, it's item list. Perfect. Let's try it out. I will again um, replicate my function a bit easier. And what I need to do here is to tell the system I'm looking at a div. Okay. Wow, lots of divs. Now it just imported every single div on the web page. That's not what we want. Instead, we will specify that we only want divs 
with a class, so square bracket, class, equal sign, and I said item list. And then square bracket again, enter. Now we have a phone number and a fax number for each of my 24 elected officials. Again, um, it used to be that we could simply come here and put another square bracket and then say one to select the phone numbers and fax numbers separately. It no longer works. Uh, they, uh, the city revamped the web page and modified the code. So it doesn't work. So instead, I can put um, or I can select everything. I will copy my data, paste special so I can actually modify it. And there we go. I will widen this here and we will use a function called split. Don't worry, that's something that we will see in the coming weeks, but just to kind of give you a preview. So I will put equal sign split. I will select cell C2 and I want to split whenever the system sees fax. That will be my divider. Again, no need to remember all of that by heart. We will look into it again in the coming weeks, but enter. Awesome. Now I have a telephone number and a fax number. I can simply come here and drag down my function. And I have a phone number and a fax number for each of my city councilors, uh, including the mayor as well. I will select all of this here, and then I will paste my values only. I will erase this column, delete the column, and I will put phone and then fax. As we will see in the coming weeks, you could select this here, uh, come here, and then you could find everywhere where it says telephone and then replace by nothing. It should work, hopefully. There we go. And we could do the same with our little uh, colon here to really clean up the data set. Again, cleaning a data set will be um, the key theme of an upcoming module. So that's how you would go in a nutshell about um, creating your own database. Unfortunately, as I, um, I think I just mentioned a few minutes ago, the wards are not really uh, nested or uh, structured properly. So it's a little bit harder. I'd say instead of wasting a lot of time, there are only 24 of them. We could just manually uh, copy and paste them and say, if I wanted the email address here for each of my uh, elected um, officials, there are different ways of going about it. Um, we could try to use the class uh, mail to, I tried a bunch of things, it didn't really work. So I looked online and that's oftentimes your best bet when you're unsure look online, it's quite likely that someone else has encountered the same issue in the past. So here I found a solution. Uh, this person, uh, which is from a website called um, Octoparse, this person found this trick here. So I will copy it. I'll put it here. And now I will redo my whole function. So import XML. I will copy the URL for this page. Okay, I will put this and then I will put my quotation marks again, forward slash, forward slash. Um, but instead of doing say A and then href, which would allow me to import everything from the website uh, that has, oh, I need to remove this here, there we go. Um, everything from the website that has a hyperlink that wouldn't really work, I will use this little part here. So let's try again. Equal sign, import XML. Let's paste my URL. And then I will simply put this here. Um, let's do enter so that it saves it. There we go. I'll copy this one. And then here I will put this one. So now I'm telling the system, go get all of my anchors. Okay. Uh, so presumably links, which contain, okay, that's kind of a keyword, the um, attribute ahref, so for a link and the keyword mail to, which is for uh, email addresses. And boom, voila. Again, not perfect. Um, there are different ways of going about it, but this worked. And um, this specific website here doesn't really um, address, you know, per se, this web page. It's just, you know, kind of a shorthand code 
uh, for whenever you want to import mail to addresses. If you get stuck, remember that you can visit Google Docs um, editor's help and come to the XML and you will have the syntax. And then there is also this very useful uh, tutorial on W3Schools expat syntax. Uh, it's called the expat tutorial, but come to the syntax and it will really teach you how to structure your expat queries to import the data it is that you want to import. Just to be clear, that's not something that you will necessarily need to do manually. There are lots of tools out there, automated tools or semi-automated tools that will allow you to automatically or semi-automatically extract data from web pages. But I really want you to understand how they work under the hood, hence why we are doing this manual exercise. And there are also Python libraries, such as Beautiful Soup, that will allow you to uh, extract data. Again, not in an automated way, but um, with perhaps um, more powerful tools and expressions, but you truly need to understand how everything works under the hood in order to use said tools.